Well, good afternoon or evening and welcome to this uh, Friday devotional from Open Door Church, Sunbury, uh, in which we're continuing to look at Jesus's kingdom, which we have been brought into upon our deliverance from the domain of darkness, as we read a little while ago in Colossians chapter 1. And last Friday, we read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, not only is this kingdom of Jesus a kingdom that cannot be shaken, as God shakes the heavens and the earth in preparation for Jesus' return, but also it's a kingdom we are receiving. And I just want to spend another devotional on this before possibly going back to some of the parables of Jesus that we were starting to look at. <clears throat> but this is a kingdom we are receiving, um, but you may have been left wondering, well, how do we receive it? It was sort of a bit of a loose end left hanging last Friday, wasn't it? We saw, yes, it's a kingdom that cannot be shaken, but we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. What does it mean to receive it? How are we to receive it? So I want to talk about that today. Uh, before returning to the powers of the kingdom, possibly next week, although you never know. And the point is that we, we saw last week, Jesus said to the disciples, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's one thing for someone to give you something and perhaps another to receive it. You can be given a gift, but not actually receive it. In my own Bible reading recently, I reached this familiar passage in Luke chapter 18, verses 15 to 17, where it says this. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, will never enter it. <clears throat> now, the main point we usually take from these verses is that Jesus welcomes children. That motivates us for Sunday school, children's work, kids' club, kids' church that we now do. Um, <clears throat> if you're a member of uh, Open Door Church, you may not believe that I at one time did children's work. When I was uh, in my late teens, I worked on a children's beach mission in the summer at Mablethorpe in Lincolnshire. And uh, we had meetings on the beach for the children where we uh, sang choruses, we did Bible quizzes and other things like that, and told a story that proclaimed the gospel message. <clears throat> and if uh, children won, say, a, a prize in a competition, a quiz, uh, answer correct or something like that they would be we would throw them a badge and the, the meeting was called sunshine corner and on the badge it said sunshine corner the picture of the sun but round the edge of the badge it said in the words of the king james version suffer the little children to come unto me now of course jesus does welcome children um although uh the children brought to Jesus in the passage we've just read were actually babies brought by their parents. <clears throat> uh, the ones he called to him could have included older children because two different Greek words are used, one for babies and the other for children in that passage. So the children Jesus actually called to himself may have included older children as well. But Jesus welcoming children, although true, isn't really the main point of these verses. The point is the one that Jesus made in verse 17 about how to receive the kingdom of God. See, there's no minimum age for becoming a Christian. There's no minimum age for believing in Jesus. And so uh, children and adults must receive the kingdom in exactly the same way. It doesn't depend even on mental capacity. Even a very elderly person suffering from dementia could still receive the kingdom of God. How? How does that happen? How, do we, how are we to receive it? Well, the answer lies really in how Jesus' kingdom differs from earthly kingdoms. And by kingdoms there, I would include republics because uh, kingdoms were normal in uh, Jesus' day. But today we have other forms of, of government 
and kingdoms. We actually live in a kingdom, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, but um, there are many other types of government. And uh, governments today can be either dictatorships or democracies, or nations can be. Nation states can be dictatorships or democracies. And if you're in a dictatorship, you obey the government because you have no choice. But in, even in a democracy, up to half the people, sometimes more depending on the electoral system, would prefer a different government. And those who voted for the current government may consider it merely the lesser of the evils. You've only to look at the present situation in the USA to see how not to receive a kingdom, how not to receive a government. Um, but even here in the UK, we have the situation where the government of the day has now uh, imposed some restrictions for the lockdown and far fewer people, it seems, are observing them than did at the time of the lockdown earlier in the year. So people don't necessarily receive the kingdom. They don't receive the government. And in a democracy as well, because not everybody likes the government or what it's doing, uh, it's considered to be a vital feature of democracy that you have the right of peaceful protest. Um, not actually during the lockdown, the demonstrations are being curtailed. But at other times during the year, despite the rules about social distancing, it seems to have been OK for people to march in protest marches because that's a fundamental right in a democracy if you don't accept the kingdom. But in Jesus's kingdom, it's completely different. People don't accept earthly kingdoms because they don't trust the king. They don't trust the government. They don't trust the president or whoever it is. But in Jesus's kingdom, the difference is we can trust the king completely, just as a little child trusts its parents, which is the point Jesus was making. So we can gladly accept Jesus's rule over our lives. And that's how we receive the kingdom. Well, why can we do that? Well, quoting Psalm 45, the writers of the Hebrews in Hebrews 1 verses 8 to 9 says of Jesus, contrasting him in that passage with angels, it says, but about the Son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. <clears throat> so, we shouldn't ask Jesus to save us and then say, through gritted teeth, well, I'd better do this because this is what Christians are supposed to do. Or I'd better not do that because Christians aren't supposed to do that. Now, there is, of course, a way that Christians are supposed to live. We've been hearing about that in our series in 1 Corinthians on Sunday mornings. But being uh, living that way is based on Jesus having said, if you love me, keep my commands, John 14, 15. And it's based on God having written his law in our hearts as part of the new covenant promised in Jeremiah 31, 15. So what I'd ask this morning is, or this evening, uh, this afternoon, whenever you're listening to this, I would ask you to consider this question. Are you receiving Jesus' kingdom, like a little child. If so, you will be in such harmony with the king that in the age to come, you will actually get to reign with him. Isn't that wonderful? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that it is your good pleasure to give the kingdom to those that believe in Jesus. And what we would say today is, we thank you for giving it, help us to receive it like a little child so that Jesus can have his perfect way in our lives. We can be truly citizens of that kingdom, enjoying all the privileges of citizenship and actually reign with Christ forever in the age to come. Amen. <laughs>